Hello there, my name is Ismael, and welcome to another exciting day in the tutorial. And uh, today we're going to be looking at uh, how I made this uh, spaceship of Alien Saucer uh, crashing into uh, the ground, crash landing uh, onto the ground. And you can see it's leaving a trace or marks uh, on the ground. And uh, before it crashes onto the ground, it, uh, it kind of uh, crashes into uh, this pole here. Let's just wait for it. Uh, that breaks apart on impact, you can see breaks that into chunks and then crash landings onto the ground leaving a mark and uh, it also uh, the pole doesn't break all the way just uh, part of it uh, stays there where which i think is awesome and i did i think a slight animation here bring back some of these effects So uh, this is what we're going to be looking at. Uh, so I'm not going to uh, show the entire, pro uh, talk about the entire process or model the thing uh, from scratch. I'm just going to talk about the workflow that I used here. Uh, uh, different things are like uh, why I used uh, three layers here. Uh, you're only seeing two, but uh, they are three uh, planes here. You can see there is one here, uh, this first one and then another one and a th third one here. Why, why, why I set up three instead of just using one uh, plane here? Uh, things like that and uh, yeah, but uh, if you want to watch the entire pr process uh, from start to finish, a time lapse of that, um, you can just go <coughs> to my second channel, Blender Money, and uh, watch uh, this video. Uh, it will show you from start to finish uh, what I did. Uh, but uh, this is just a quick breakdown of uh, the process. Yeah, so let's get uh, started by opening up a new Brenda project. I already have my spaceship here uh, with no animation. Let me remove this keyframe. No animation and what? So if you want to download this kind of uh, spaceship here, uh, you can just, uh, I will leave a link to my CG Trader account uh, if you want to get it and uh, support me that way. Uh, so, but uh, for now, let's uh, get into uh, the process. So the first thing we're going to do is give this uh, spaceship uh, an initial velocity, as you can see, starts off let me first turn off these effects because sometimes obvious lags when i play animation so uh, you can see it starts off with that initial velocity and uh, with the if we use just set up the rigid body system right now uh it just falls down uh, because of gravity uh, from the gravitational force uh it doesn't have an initial velocity and uh, there is no way to set it up uh in the uh, rigid body system uh, so what we do is uh, animate this, I'll give it a slight push, so I'll just uh, give it a few keyframes to produce uh, that initial velocity. Let me first remove this rigid body. I can see that's what we have uh, for the animation. And uh, uh, if we switch on the rigid body system, you can see our blender will just ignore all the keyframes we set up here are uh, because I think the rigid body system and the animation system in Blender are two separate things uh, that usually don't uh, kind of interact with each other. So I don't know. But uh, whenever you switch between uh, the animation and uh, whenever you turn on the rigid body, it just ignores all the keyframes you have here and see so it's still just falling down. So, uh, but uh, there is this option uh, that uh, lets you activate uh, the, the keyframes and uh, when you turn that on, then it will ignore the rigid body system and uh, now only consider the keyframes. But we want both. We want the animation and we want the rigid body system. Uh, we want the animation for the initial velocity here and uh, we want uh, the rigid body to take over after that so that uh, we can have a, project, a projectile kind of animation. Uh, so, uh, so what we can do is uh, this, since this, this feature here, the animated uh, check mark, uh, is animatable so we can switch it on and switch it off uh, so at around here let me just move these keyframes just a bit and i will also want this to have a slight rotation something like that so we can turn on and turn off the animation around here at uh, the, the timeline here around here so around this keyframe so i'm just going to mark this so that all the keyframes here, are so, so that Blender considers the timeline 
are from zero frames uh, to around eight frames and uh, from eight and beyond uh, blender should only consider uh, the rigid body system uh, because i would have that uh, the animation turned off so let's see okay and, uh, can see. now if we play back you can see now we have a projectile which is awesome so uh, if you see closely there is a slight kind of uh, slowing down when uh, at around this frame here uh, because if we go to the curve editor I can see that slight and uh, slowing down is uh, produced by this kind of Bezier type of uh, keyframes and I'm switching between the timeline and uh, uh, the curves by using the control tab key uh, so so to remove that I'm just going to change the key hand the how's it called uh, keyframe handle type are from uh, aligned at a vector so that we have a linear animations instead of uh, uh, that Bezier uh, that kind of slows down when the when the animation is about to stop so uh, that should be more fluid uh, like what we have uh, exactly what we need so now that we have the initial velocity let's start working on the ground so i'll add a plane here I'll scale it i don't want it to be too wide so uh, because that may take a little bit more time to simulate so let's see let me go to this render turn on random and then shadows and uh, cavity this is what we have i also don't like how this is too slow so i'll speed this up i'm just going to scale down the keyframes here let me just move this closer and uh, that should uh, speed up uh, the animation just a bit now it's flying off our ground and uh, i think i can just move our ground forward and uh, also increase my timeline and move this even further forward uh, so right now we saw the ground is, the ship is just going through the ground so what i'm going to do is also give this a, a rigid body system and uh, I see it just falls down uh, so to make sure that it stays in place uh, as a ground i'll just change other uh, type to passive and uh, it should act as a collider but uh, won't uh, fall down so i'll have that set up but uh, the problem we're having is that uh, our ground here is fairly flat uh, which is not uh, what you would see in the normal world uh, so we want to make this a bit uneven uh, so i'm going to subdivide this a few times let me first apply the scale annotation and then add a few subdivisions uh, so that we can use uh, the so that we can use uh, the displacement modifier uh, with a noise texture so just do that add a clouds a texture uh, let me also add uh, some smooth uh, shading you can see we have some surface details now uh, let me just also let me first apply the scale and uh, increase this this uh, the surface this the displacement uh, strength and uh, I don't like I don't like how the noise looks uh, let me f maybe increase the subdivisions and before we do that I want to scale this up but uh, going back and forth uh, between these the modifiers and that the texture is a, b a bit of work so I'm just going to add an empty here uh, where is that Uh, just and use it as the ob as a control object uh, for the scale of the noise so if i go to the modifiers and like i can choose the texture coordinates uh, to be object and I select an object uh, to use as and uh, if i scale this up you can see i'm scaling up the noise uh, texture uh, so just to demonstrate what i'm what i'm what i want to show you here uh, if i increase this noise to this level you would ex ex expect uh, the ship uh, to kind of collide uh, with the surface uh, taking in consideration uh, the uneven surface like that but uh, if we play back you see it just almost doesn't collide with the surface it does collide with it but it's almost not touching the uneven surfaces uh, this is because if we go to the physics uh, tab uh, of the object 
of this ground. Uh, you see in the collision settings, uh, we have the shapes turned set to convex half. Uh, this is a way for Blender to optimize the simulation so that whenever you simulating, it doesn't take up a lot of CPU. And uh, uh, it would it would work for a simple object, uh, say like this, uh, this, uh, uh, this shape here. Uh, a convex half shape is enough for this object to be used in a collision uh, for, for rigid simulation, but uh, for a surface like this with a lot of uneven surfaces, uh, we really need a different uh, shape for the, we, we really need Blender to take, in to take in consideration the uneven bumpy surface uh, we have here. So for that, we need to change uh, the shape here from a uh, concave, convex hull to uh, mesh, uh, which will take in consideration all the uneven surfaces here. So if we go to our viewport here, and since this is just uh, the ground and uh, it's not a large uh, surface, it doesn't take away much from the CPU uh, processing power. So let's play back this and see. We need to go back to the starting frame. You can see now that's what we have. You can see how it bounces when it hits uh, those uneven ground surfaces. So that's good. And now we can go into uh, the next bit, uh, which is kind of creating that uh, trace or trail uh, the uh, surface uh, the shape does adds. So we can use this, uh, actually we can't use this uh, because uh, we are using dynamic painting uh, to paint that trace. Uh, so if we give this, and, and, and I'm getting to uh, the part where I explain why I'm using three uh, meshes instead, instead of one. So the reason why I used uh, uh, the second one, uh, I'll come. I'll, I'll come to the third one uh, in the next part, maybe. Uh, but uh, the reason why I used uh, a second mesh uh, is because of this reason. Uh, is that uh, if we tried adding uh, other dynamic paint here, so if I give this uh, this surface, make this a dynamic paint surface, and uh, make it a canvas, and also give this uh, a dynamic uh, paint object, make it a dynamic paint object, and give it. A brush setting. I've already talked about uh, how these dynamic, dynamic painting works. Uh, maybe I'll leave a link in the description ex uh, to the video explaining that. Uh, or you can just go uh, to my videos and uh, check that. I'll leave a link. Uh, so after setting this up, you would expect this, when it collides this, to leave that trace. Uh, but the problem is uh, because this surface is a rigid body and uh, it's the same rigid body. Uh, that is creating uh, the collision. So when this object uh, collides with this, it just bounces off instead of changing, the, deforming this surface like a, a paint brush, a, a dynamic paint object would. would. Uh, it's not giving us the effect uh, we need. I don't know if I've explained that clearly, but uh, yeah, just understand that uh, these two, uh, one being a passive, uh, rigid body system and another being uh, dynamic paint. They're kind of conflicting with each other and are not deforming uh, in the exact way you want them to. So what I would do is uh, just duplicate, what I did is duplicate this so that I have a one, uh, have it as a different surface and uh, push it just above uh, the ground and uh, uh, this, the displacement we have here is too high. I just wanted to de demonstrate uh, what would happen if this shape collided into an even a surface compared to uh, a flat surface. So let me reduce that first. Strength of maybe around there. So this should be even flat, something like that. And uh, we don't want this to be a rigid body system. So I'll go to the rigid body systems and uh, also remove that. And you can see now, oh, and another reason, another reason why I set this up, let me maybe just show you what, just set up the dynamic paint, painting before I talk about that. Uh, so if we give this a dynamic painting and uh, give it a canvas uh, setting and uh, turn the surface into, from paint, uh, because we want to paint uh, the displacement uh, so that uh, when this hits uh, the surface, the, the surface, it kind of uh, displaces it. So want to change the surface to displacement. You know, I actually didn't test that out. 
to see if that works on this. Let's, let's first test this out and see. Let me first, let me delete this first. Just test out something here. If I give this, this a dynamic paint, canvas uh, displacement, let's see what happens. Nothing. Uh, what ex exactly what I expected. So if we duplicate this, again, remove the rigid body, give it a dynamic painting, and uh, then uh, this should be a canvas. I change this to displacement. You can see uh, the mark uh, that was left. Uh, okay, this is the reason why I give this some distance away from this object, uh, from the second layer, uh, is that uh, if they're just on top of each other, uh, there won't be enough room uh, for this to be displaced. And see. Uh, let me also make this a bit even flatter by reducing uh, its strength. So if I push it even up, you can see we have more room uh, for it to leave uh, the dent. Okay, you can see all for the displacement to work. So that's what we have. And uh, this is bouncing way too high. So what I'm going to do is reduce uh, the strength on this. So that is not that strong, strong, sorry. It's not that strong and uh, let's, okay. Uh, let me end this uh, here and uh, uh, because this is getting too long and break this into different parts. Yeah, so thank you for watching.